Hi everybody, it's Tracy Sweeney here, uh, coming live with you from my studio here in Mayo. Um, thanks to the Linen Hall for wanting to showcase some of the techniques that I use and hopefully give you guys some little bit of inspiration if you're trapped at home and rummaging through the contents of your um, your cabinet downstairs that's full of magnolia paint and tape and all the different household things that you figure you can't make art with, but you can. Um, so what I'm gonna do with you guys today is I'm working on four different paintings at the moment. So as I would have explained last week, the way I work is very spontaneous and sometimes I have to, in order to build up the layers, I would sometimes work on about 10 paintings at the same time so that I can build a layer, let it dry, build a layer, let it dry, scratch back into those layers again so that each painting looks like an artifact. It looks like something that's existed for a long time. So I would have shown some of these uh, photographs last week, but I would take a lot of photographs of old walls and doors and peeling paint and to see how the layers underneath inform the layers on the surface is very interesting to me visually. So I try and recreate that in, in numerous ways in the paintings that I do. So one of the techniques that I was used, and, and I'll cover four of them today, but one of the techni techniques that I use is would be collage. And again, once a layer of collage goes up, I would paint over it let that dry and I would either come back with another layer of collage, another layer of paint, scratch into it again, things like that. Also guys, feel free to ask me some questions here. If I see the questions coming up on screen, I'll answer as I go. And if not, feel free to um, jot them onto the, to the Facebook page afterwards and I can answer them as I go. So um, this is a painting that I would have started uh, last week. So I've built up a certain amount of surface on it there are two things that I would use. Either I would mix PVA glue with something like marble dust, which is quite an expensive art material to buy, but it, it has beautiful, beautiful results. Or alternatively, if you're at home right now and you have something like tile grout in your press, mix that with some glue, or you can make up a paste yourself with a flour and water. This is all experimentation, guys. You know, you're sitting at home, you want to make something unusual for the course of the lockdown, and you might end up with a beautiful piece of art. Don't be precious is what I'm saying. Use what you have. Use the most random tools you have. That's where you're going to get the spontaneous results. I love painting, but I was told years ago, the more finicky I get with a paintbrush and the more I try and recreate a photograph, the less free you become and the more that spontaneity, spontaneity is lost in a painting. So please feel free to do as much crazy things as you want to do with as much tools as you want. A screwdriver is a great, great tool. Um, as is a Stanley knife. You don't, you don't need brushes, you just don't need brushes. So this painting I built up the initial layer on it with, um, last week I had no marble dust with me so I was using some uh, tile grout mixed with glue. I've built up that surface. I've came back over it with a brush and now I have some oil paints here only because I'm in studio but you might have some kids paints at home or you might have some paint in your press. An old can of glass paint could be the answer to what you're looking for. So I have covered all of that in, in that nice paint. Now I'm using glue. You may not have some at home, but there is a way that you can build up um, a kind of a glue surface with flour and water. Look it up. It's called wheat paste. Uh, all the graffiti artists out there use it. Not that I'm advocating that you should wheat paste the walls of anywhere, but that's how you make it. Right. So you start by putting on a nice heavy layer of the PVA glue. Now, you're gonna get messy, wear all clothes. In fact, do this outside, or maybe you could do it with your kids if your kids are on the loose, which mine definitely are. Don't worry that this is white. If, if you do happen to have some, um, some glue in your house, because it will dry clear, you won't be able to see any of the paint in this, um, or sorry, you won't be able to see any of the glue when we're completely finished with this. Now, you'll also wonder how we're going to, with the texture of the, of the painting, how is the paper going to stick to it all? Well, the truth is, it's not. Some parts of it will start to rise, um, and, but that's part of the spontaneity of building these layers because you're going to get different um, different effects 
as you go with this painting. Like I said, I work on 10 paintings at the same time. The reason being, if I do, I end up with a real spontaneous piece that when people walk into a room, they, they ask questions about it, you know? They kind of, um, they're wondering what caused that mark. And also the accidental mark is beautiful because you end up with shapes that you wouldn't if you had tried to be really, really precise. So I've covered all of this now in PVA. And my next port of call is some paper that I'm going to put on top of it. Now, in the past, guys, I've used, when it comes to building up the, the next layer, there are so many surfaces you can use. I have actually used old telephone directories um, to build surfaces in paintings. And when you see these really small um, people's names or phone numbers or little details or advertisements. I found some beautiful old newspapers a couple, a couple of years ago when I was in Sweden with lots of Swedish text and it was beautiful to build that into the painting and as I painted over it you could see little snippets of um, Swedish, real Scandinavian detail coming through. So phone books. Here's like, this is tissue paper that you get, you know, you buy some nice dress or piece of um, clothing in a shop and they will wrap your, your garment in tissue paper. It's beautiful to use, it's very soft and it clings really nicely to the surface. Right now though, some of you guys will have some of this stuff at home. It is, it's just newsprint. It's not expensive. Uh, newspaper is equally as good. If, if newspaper is what you have, use your newspaper. So um, usually what I try to do is, I will, leave a line. I love lines in my work, if you haven't already noticed. So that goes on there. Actually, wallpaper paste is another thing you can use if you don't have um, PVA. It's a, a nice one to use. So we flatten that down over the surface. Okay. And I'm going to get another sheet. And I like to leave a little gap sometimes. Look, it's totally up to yourselves, but I have this little thing in my head that painting need lines. Sometimes the more irregular the line, the better. Because when I paint over this, you're gonna end up with something very unusual. So as you can see, it's kind of stuck down there now. I'll get my Stanley. Turn it off. It's very satisfying. And just because I haven't gotten this edge over here, we can fill that in. Again, it can be nice to leave these little linear gaps because they're the, they're the little details in the painting that will start to come through as you start to build up the layers, okay? So it's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle, but like that, do not even worry about it. Do not worry about how things look at this point. It's, it's irrelevant. You're, you're only in the early stages of applying this. Your mind and your eye let you make the decisions as you go. So don't, you, the easiest way to start painting is to have maybe an idea of a, a loose idea of a color in your mind or a rough you know key thing that you like in painting but when it comes to when it comes to actually making the work the work is going to develop and change as you go along you have no control over this it's an entirely spontaneous kind of a of thing so I'm going to take off all this paper um, at the edges. And again, don't worry about the tears. That's going to become part of the overall pattern as you go. Um, what I will do now is I'll mix up the paint. So what I absolutely love is um, a little bit of blue mixed with a little bit of white. And Bob, you're, on, you're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I have some um, linseed oil mixed up with some blue paint and some white paint and I'm just going to go fairly wild with this. So 
again, you don't have to be precious about this. You don't need to be pernickety about how this is all going to come together. So just give it a wash. In some respects, the more unusual the, the tone you get, and see, it'll, it'll rip because it's still wet underneath. Let it happen, guys. Let it happen because the more unusual the tones that start to build up on these layers, the better as they go, okay? So I hope you're all enjoying this uh, fine weather we're having in, in Mayo. Okay, so quite simply, that's one way of building up this surface. Now, after I finish the video with you guys, I will go back and I will complete the whole, the whole layer in my blue paint. Um, the PVA will dry at that point, and I might even put that blue paint in along those layers as well. So it sinks into those layers and leaves quite a nice line. I will leave that to dry. And I will show it to you next week as we put on another layer and as I start to scratch back into the surface. So that's the first that's the first um, idea that I can give you in terms of building up that surface, okay? And um, the next one that I want to show you guys is this. So last week um, I worked on a small, small canvas that you would have seen. And um, again, going back to the lines in a painting, it's the another way of building up that surface is obviously to use masking tape or or frog tape so if you haven't already heard of frog tape it's like masking tape but it's very easy to take off it's very easy to put on it's a lot nicer to work with a bit more expensive but it's worth a uh, purchase uh, if you see it in different places so last week i built up the surface of this board with um you, you can kind of see the texture on it with um, some PVA and some, I think it was tile grout. And we came back over that at the end of the, of the class with some blue paint just mixed with some linseed oil and a very, very large brush. Again, don't be afraid to use the household brushes. They're way better than the, the art brushes, especially if you want to make a real loud and spontaneous mark. So the other way of building up these lines in your paintings is with tape. So what I've done is, in this regard, it's a, it's a square canvas. So I am doing three or four blocks um, of, of texture and it will it'll come together nicely because I'll make it quite dark at the top and quite light at the bottom and it'll start to have that faded look. So what I've done is I've just got my masking tape, I've got my ruler, I've got a pencil, I've marked out some grid lines on it of where I want the tape to go and once I put on that tape I can start to let the paint come down over the tape. The tape won't budge. Literally, I could leave this tape on until the end of like however many layers I do and then take it off and you'll start to see that nice blue coming through at the end. So just to show you how I do that, I will move my camera down here. So again, the tape is on in this section just to show you the, my lines, my little guidelines are there. You can barely see them, but they're there. Um, come back with your tape and start to align things up. Visually, I like um, minimal kind of work. I like to have sections in the work that it's like there's chaos in one section and there's calmness and you know everything is in order so it's the order versus the chaos in a lot of my paintings i like to have busy areas i like to have quiet areas the busy areas really add the passion to the piece but the quieter areas really allow your eye to rest and to wander into that section so here we are uh the tape is on and we're kind of good to go now i'm conscious that you guys are at home in your in your homes and you're wondering well um how what am i going to use so I'm, I'm using house paint because it informs my own work at times because of the different aspects of uh, shine like the different finishes you get from household paint it's it's far more varied than using oil paint so for this i've decided to use white glass paint oh yeah bring it on can't beat it 
Um, so get your large brush. Again, you can use a house brush, it's fine. Um, with white gloss paint, I'm going to let this drip. Drips form a lot of the things that I do in the work. So I'm gonna let it drip, I'm gonna let it do its thing. It'll come down over the board. And again, I have to then walk away from that board, let it dry and come back to it in a few days time when it's ready to take another layer. And the next layer might be collage. It might be more masking tape. Who knows? It will depend on the mood on the day, but that's what art is all about, guys. So here you go. Again, the kids love this, but make sure you roll clothes on them because they will run riot with house paint. They're outside painting a fence today. That's why they're not here with me. Hee <laughs> All right, guys, so I literally would put that on as wildly as I can. Sometimes I would just put it on the top. Now, you, you, can, you can do this in different ways. Like, you can build up surfaces with gloss paint just in one section. Um, but let those drips come down. Let's let's see what happens to this in an hour's time and how it's all going to come together. I don't really need to put on any more than that. Gravity is going to take its course and the work, it's, it's going to come down the board. Um, and it will inform something else in the next layer that I go to put on. Again, if you can understand, that once this tape is lifted, whatever paint comes down, you're going to have a beautiful line, a beautiful seam along the, the side of the work. So that should be really, really great. The next thing I'll show you is scratching. So I will take my camera and so this painting, this painting started over the course of the past week. Um, it's quite a large board by all means, as you can see. Uh, the first layer, and again, you can see that I put the tape on this. That's what that orange line is. So it started off as a, a, a primed white board that I then des decided to um, use my, what did I use? I used the PVA and the tile grout to build up this really textured orange layer underneath. I gave that two days to dry. I came back to it a number of days ago with marble dust and, uh, and linseed oil and this lovely verdigris kind of a mint green. I mixed that up on a sheet of cardboard. It was very thick and I applied it with none other than uh, old credit cards or old hotel cards. So once you've, you know, built up your paint, your your kind of tile guard to give that surface, um, you start to apply the paint then like this in a scraping kind of a sequence. So I did that over the course of a day and I come back with light shades of the mint green, dark shades of the mint green, that gave it a nice bit of texture. And then afterwards, I came back with a wide brush, some black paint, that was just household black paint because that's, again, my stocks are running low here of what I can use. But use the household black paint. And now what you can see is that there's a nice kind of a, you can see the paint is moving. There's a nice kind of a tooth to the paint. I'm using a, um, a screwdriver, but you can actually use anything that's going to scratch, like a fork, a knife, um, anything, there's, there's a couple of plastering tools that I use here regularly. I would class myself sometimes more of a plasterer than um, an artist, but I want each of these paintings that I do to look like sections of a wall. So literally, start scratching, okay? Now, there's something really satisfactory about this, guys. I cannot describe, <laughs> it's like, I don't know. It's like scratching an itch, I guess. Um, but this paint will start to move and the more tools that you use to take this paint off the more you're starting to look like an abandoned surface okay so that starts to come off you'll have great fun with this this is, this is, this is a great part but it's still not finished in my mind's eye a painting needs to hang on a wall for a while and you need to look at it in your sitting room day in day out for a couple of weeks before you decide this is going to be finished and I know even at that 
okay, great, it, it's starting to resemble what I wanted to, but I still have layers to go on top of that to make this look old, to make it look like a real, real wall. So that's uh, painting number four. And painting number five uh, is this one. Again, it's a small piece that I started in the last week or so. Um, the texture was built up using, again, the plaster, uh, tile grout and PVA. And I really applied this really, really thickly. So there's a, there's a real grain to this now. Um, I also came back over it when that was dry with some, some raw umber, some of the browns. And I started to add little sections of the browns here at the bottom to start to make it look kind of old. Now, I did a painting recently. Um, it was in the Hamilton Gallery in Sligo and it was then subsequently shown in um, the Museum of Literature up in Dov Dublin. It was purchased by a client, but the painting was this painting, which is reminiscent of a Van Gogh painting that I absolutely love. And I decided I wanted to put my spin on it. So I've started looking at nature and branches a little bit more. And again, in order to, to make a painting that looks like this, you really have to let the layers build up and it's going to take time. So I'm happy with the surface here at the moment, but now I need to put up some... Uh, some of these branches so again I wouldn't be um, precious about about what I'm using so right now I'm using my Prussian blue I've got some linseed oil um, I'm going to use my linseed oil with some white and some of this um, what is this this is raw sienna because literally this will only take a, a few minutes and it means coming back to it again in the next couple of days to to start to add more and more detail to this. Because the, when when you get, this would, be, this would be me being finicky about a painting. Sometimes hold your brush at the end of the brush as opposed to having so much control over the pencil aspect. You know, it's not a pencil. You want to let this go free. It can sometimes be literally just letting the letting the brush do its thing and branches will form themselves naturally so i'll be working on this over the next couple of days i can put up some quick posts of of how it's developing but like let that paint just do its thing let the paint do the work you you don't need to you know you really don't need to put labor into it because that's not what's going to um make the piece a spontaneous piece uh, sometimes when you do this kind of work as well use that thick brush because that will help to make branches nice and thick and then come back with a smaller smaller kind of a more neater kind of a brush don't be worried if the branches change color as you go down quite like nature doesn't nature doesn't worry just do it because you're going to start building up shadows by using darker colours on that. To let the paint roll into the surface of it. I feel like that guy, uh, Bob Ross. Except I don't have his crazy hair. Talk to the canvas. <laughs> um, so we keep that going there. Now, I will do a little bit more work on this today. And I will put up some posts of it. But I won't finish it. Because I want these four paintings that I am working on with you guys. Um, I want to be able to show more of them to you over the next. I have uh, two more classes to do next Wednesday and the following Wednesday. So it'll be nice to be able to have a finished piece to show you guys at the end of it. Um, so that's my four pieces. I'll just show you this piece that I finished um, for a client in the last few days. A friend of mine, Anne-Marie, if she's watching, she got in touch lately and said that she was looking for a painting. Um, Normally pastels are not my thing, but her idea was that she has a sitting room and that she wanted um, all the colours in a painting that she could have in a painting so that whenever she decides to change the wall colour that uh, it will suit. And I thought that was a really interesting request. So put that together for her. It's just finished in the last few days, but the texture is really great in it. It's very... Um, you know, it, it literally, it took, it took a few weeks because I was putting on bits of white, bits of lilac, bits of blue, bits of darker blue, bits of brown. And you end up with this beautiful, 
richly like you want to touch that surface it's a very very tactile piece so uh, it's lovely to work on these projects so guys i'll turn this camera around um lovely to chat to you again today i look forward to having a chat with you again next week and if you have any questions feel free to send them on um but just go wild and you know don't hesitate to put a mark on a board because you will end up with something beautiful that you've made like when i when i go to the tesco's of the world and see how much mass produced badly produced copies of art is out there it's it, it's horrendous you know what I mean you have all this stuff in your house even if you think you don't you can make a painting with magnolia paint and some lead pencil on, a, on an old piece of board or timber that you have at home it is actually that amazing some of the most beautiful art I've seen is work on cardboard and it's stunning so do it enjoy it and again if you have any questions please 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 throw me uh, an email or send a message on the on Facebook or my website is www.tracysweeney.com and I'll talk to you soon and thanks for all the comments coming in it's lovely to know that uh, there's a couple of people out there getting some inspiration Thanks guys, chat soon, bye.